Hey, I am glad that you're here because we're going to begin a conversation about this beautiful, big, epic, strange, ancient book called the Bible. So just a quick story. Years ago, when we were living in California, a guy came and sat down in my office and he was telling me about things going on with his life and his family. And he looked at the Bible that was sitting on the edge of my desk. And he was telling me about another parent that he was a friends with that was the parent of a child on one of his son's basketball teams. And apparently this other parent had asked him about raising children and about what they do. And he looked over at my Bible and he pointed at it and he says, what I told him was, I raise my kids according to every word of that book, meaning the Bible. People talk about the Bible a lot as if it just fell out of the sky and has all of these roadmaps and guides and there's a reference in the back where you can just flip and maybe find P for parenting. People think about that in politics. Well, what's my politics? Well, it's biblical. Well, what does that mean? The Bible didn't just float down from the sky. It wasn't delivered on tablets. It's complicated in lots of places and it's straightforward in other places. It's epic and it's small. It has to do with large areas of complicated, very important aspects of life. And then it deals with little things and how we speak to one another, which turn out to not be so little after all. And, and by the time that you and I got the Bible, you know, it had been bound, typeset, translated into thousands and thousands of languages and dialects. Do you remember the first Bible you got? You probably got it before you were even able to read, or, or maybe even the second Bible when you were in elementary school. Like a lot of kids like me who grew up as a part of a church someplace, you graduated high school. And what did you get from your church as you were leaving to go to college? You got a Bible. You just got a big, nice one. Maybe it was leather with your name on it. I remember the Bible my mom got me when I turned 15 years old. It was about this size, and it was baby blue. And it was my 15th on the 15th birthday, because my birthday is on June 15th. It was a special Bible for me. But that's not how we got the Bible. And a lot of us know the stories that are in the Bible, but we don't know the story of the Bible. And so we find ourselves living lives that are very hectic and complex and layered. And we think that the Bible might have something to say, something to speak into it, but we don't necessarily know how to use it. About four years ago, I was meeting with a group of mayors. There are small town mayors all across the state of Texas. And they were asking me questions about how to deal with particular issues in their localities, in their municipalities. And most of those mayors were Christians. And as I began to talk about some of the things that they were, ha they were seeing and that were happening around them, it dawned on me, like, you all say that you're Christians. You have professions of faith, but you don't know how this book speaks into those situations. And sometimes there was like a direct story a direct teaching that would be important for them to know, to understand where to go next. So we're going to spend a couple of sessions talking about this incredible book that has been handed down that is a source of inspiration, a source of wisdom, a source of teaching, a source of history, but has gotten misinterpreted and abused over and over and over. And that's not to say that everything that I say or everything that you've ever heard about the Bible is 100% correct, accurate all the time, but it is a good, solid attempt. And there are some ways to read the Bible that are just better than other ways of reading and understanding the Bible. And we want you to know those ways, not so you can be Mr. Bible Answer Man or Miss Bible Answer Woman, but that you can have wisdom and inspiration and purpose and meaning and direction for your life. So we're going to talk about the Bible. And I want to start with something that's really obvious when you read the text, but isn't obvious when you receive the text. And that is this, that someone wrote this down. So the Bible is a book, but it's more than a book. And it's more diverse than most books. But you ever think about that? That people 
humans sat down and wrote this. And why is that important? Because when you got your Bible, it had already been typeset and bound and all of that. But that's not the way the Bible always was. And so you will hear people say something that sounds like this. Well, it's in the Bible, or we believe the Bible, or trust the Bible, or you don't believe the Bible because you don't believe exactly as they believe, or you don't practice the same way that they practice. And it's the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. And you would come to think that we are Christians because of the Bible. The Bible informs our Christianity. It has something to say about it. It has an authority over our lives. But we're not Christians because the Bible exists. The Bible exists because Christians exist. There was an event, the resurrection of Jesus. And because of that event, there were some people in the first century who said, this person was important. So here's the story of what makes a Christian a Christian. In the ancient world, there were all sorts of gods. Every region had a god. Sometimes they had male and female gods. Sometimes they had multiple gods, tons and tons of gods. And Jesus comes along and says, no, I am the true God. Do you remember this from the Ten Commandments, when God tells Moses to tell the people that they should have no other gods before me. Isn't it interesting that God doesn't tell Moses there are no other gods? God is understanding the way that humans understand the world. And so he says, I am the one true God. And that truth is vindicated by the fact that this man, Jesus, rose from the dead or the early Christians believed he rose from the dead. And so they began to write down what he did and what he said. They logged it. So when you open up your scriptures and you get to the New Testament with those first four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, it's easy because we've had it for so long to read it and think, oh, I'm reading the Bible. But what if you read it like this? I'm reading a historical document of people narrating real life events as they happened. And as the church began to grow, people like the Apostle Paul has an encounter with this Jesus on the road to Damascus. And Paul says, oh, all of those other texts that we have been reading, that we have been reciting in our homes and in temples and in synagogues, they were talking about this guy, this Jesus. And so the Bible comes to us not as some holy writ that was just merely handed down, but people attesting to an event that happened. Christians gave us the Bible. The Bible did not give us Christians. And here's why that's important. Our faith is not in the Bible. Our faith is in Jesus. That's crucial to remember because just like everything else, the Bible itself can become a focus, a point of worship. And there are people out there, maybe you've met some of them, maybe you've been one of them. I know at parts of my life, I have been one of them where I worshiped the Bible over worshiping Jesus. And yes, the Bible attests to Jesus. It narrates the teachings and the life of Jesus. It has the authority of Jesus' teaching in it. But just saying the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, well, that's not enough. And we're not the first people. Go back and read the prophets, which we'll talk about in a couple of other sessions, that God keeps coming to them through the prophets, coming to the people through the prophets and saying, like, you got to change your ways. You got to do differently. But because they had the temple... They believed that having the temple was the same as having God. And so the prophets come to them and they keep saying to the people, you all keep saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, as if the temple will save you. And it doesn't. And I want you to know, going in, the Bible doesn't save you. Jesus saves you. The Bible is not an object of worship. Jesus 
is an object of worship. In the end, we don't look to the Bible. We look to Jesus. The Bible simply informs us as to who Jesus is. So why do we have the Bible? Well, one of those documents, what we call the Gospel of Luke, that bears witness to who Jesus was, begins this way. Luke, who was a doctor, wrote this down. He says, For those who love God, several other people have already written accounts of what God has been bringing to completion among us, using the reports of the original eyewitnesses, those who were there from the start to witness the fulfillment of prophecy. Like those other servants who have recorded the messages, I present to you my carefully researched orderly account of these new teachings. That's what the Bible is. It is the prophets. It is the teachings of Jesus as recorded in history for the formation of people who live and look like Jesus in the world. We'll see you next time.